Hi everyone, welcome to Morning Trade with Money Control. I'm Karunya Rao and in the next half hour we get you actionable trading strategies, sectoral trends and most importantly we'll be addressing your queries on the show live. So keep sending us in the comments. The global handover meanwhile, if we look at it, quite weak. Key markets seem to be rattled by the US inflation data. EU indices settled lower. Stock 600 was down by about six tenths of a percent, pairing sharp losses at open. Almost all sectors, major bursts, finished in the negative territory in the European part of the world. Wall Street closed mixed. Fed looks to control inflation. Jerome Powell said that he cannot guarantee a soft landing for the economy. Stocks across Asia rally in trade after a roller coaster week. Japan's Nikkei leads the gains for our own markets. It's likely to be a solid start. Host of earnings lined up as well for big and small companies. We put the stock spotlight on SBI, Tech Mahindra, Avenue Supermarts, iShare, and Escorts. Later on the show, discuss the trending topic of what's causing the free fall in Indian rupee. Okay, to talk stocks, let's uh, bring on board Rupak Day of LKP Securities. Rupak, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Well, after several days, we're finally expecting a positive start to the Indian markets. SGX Nifty is up about 150 points as we speak. So tell us, what do you think is in store for traders today? Yeah, uh, yesterday we have seen that uh, Nifty closed uh, near uh, to its uh, previous swing low of uh, 15,670. So uh, it was uh, it was looking that uh, as long as uh, it is held, like uh, 16,560 is held, then uh, we, we were expecting a bounce back, a good bounce back uh, in Nifty. And overall market was highly oversold and and a uh, bounce from the current level was exposed was expected. So uh, on the higher end, uh, sixteen thousand is going to be very uh, very crucial resistance mm. on sustained basis. If we can sustain above sixteen thousand, then we can expect a rally towards sixteen thousand four hundred kind of levels over the short term. Okay, all right. Uh, so. Anything that, you know, uh, any indices that perhaps investors can keep on their watch list, uh, Bank Nifty or any other sectoral index that you think could see some meaningful action today? Okay. Uh, um, uh, Bank Nifty actually, we have seen a, a lot of correction, but uh, has reached around its 85% uh, uh, retracement level uh, from, from the recent peak of around uh, 38,800. So we're expecting a uh, pullback in the bank Nifty and and in the banking space. So uh, uh, one should uh, remain uh, watchful in the banking space. Also, we are expecting a uh, pullback in the IT space after a huge correction. And uh, IT index has formed a doji pattern on the daily chart. So we are expecting a pullback in IT space also. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, talk about the stocks that are in the spotlight. Uh, it's going to be an earnings heavy day. A lot of uh, interesting names which uh, typically garner a lot of uh, market attention. There's SBI, Avenue Supermarts and several others. Let's start with SBI since you were talking about Bank Nifty. Looking at the numbers, the estimates this time around, we expect uh, a good improvement as far as the NII is concerned. Uh, credit book expansion is also likely to be on the cards. But technically speaking, uh, how do you see SBI playing out in the next few days or next few weeks? Uh, what do you uh, foresee? Uh, I can see uh, SBI has reached its 61.8% uh, uh, Fibonacci retracement level of the previous rally. So it, uh, if uh, SBI uh, sustains above 460 in, uh, in early trade, uh, it can move up towards uh, 480 to uh, 4, uh, 495 over the short term. So I'm expecting a pullback in SBI. Hmm. Okay. How about, uh, say, an Avenue Supermarts? Because, uh, yes, it's it's not a nifty 50 company, but there is a lot of interest in this one. Uh, let me quickly read you through the estimates. Um, at least the revenue or the store uh, performance seems to have been uh, back to pre-COVID levels. There has been a very strong pickup in store additions, very aggressive expansion there. Same store sales growth is likely to be healthy this time around. Um, overall, uh, the quarter looks okay, look, looks steady, but on the technicals, how does DMART look? 
uh, uh, on the weekly chart, uh, the demand has reached its previous swing high. So, uh, the previously it was resistance. Now it will act as a support. So, thirty-two, uh, thirty-two fifty to thirty-two hundred will uh, is likely to be a very crucial support hmm. for the short term. If it is held, uh, we can expect a uh, pullback towards uh, thirty-six thousand, uh, thirty-six hundred to thirty-seven hundred over the short term. Okay. Um, some queries are also coming in, so we'll, uh, you know, before we move on to other stocks in focus, I want to address a query that's coming in on LNT. Yesterday, LNT's numbers were out uh, post the closing of the market. Ten uh, percent year-on-year rise was seen in uh, net profit, coming in at thirty-six hundred odd crores, but it was a tad below analyst expectations. Rupak, uh, one of our viewers is asking. His name is Ashok Gupta. Is asking if he should buy LNT today. What is your sense? How is it likely to perform today? So LNT has uh, fallen below its uh, important uh, Fibonacci ratio, and currently uh, it is trading just uh, just below, uh, well below it, hmm. I would say. So uh, over the uh, short term, the weakness may persist in the stock. However, if one uh, one can get the stock around a uh, fourteen seventy to fourteen eighty, then he can add the stock. With the stop loss of fourteen fifty, and for a target of uh, around sixteen uh, twenty to sixteen sixty. Okay, all right. Then next query. Then it's coming in from Santosh. He wants to know what investors should do with Dixon. What is your projection as far as Dixon's charts are concerned? So uh, on the weekly chart, Dixon has given a breakdown from the recent consolidation. The trend is weak currently. However, uh, if we look at the previous support, we can find a support around thirty-three hundred. Okay. So one can add Dixon around thirty-three hundred with a stop loss below thirty thirty-two twenty for a reversal of uh, towards uh, four thousand over the short term. Mm. Okay. So let's turn once again back to the stocks that we're focusing on for our viewers. Um, there's Aisha Escorts numbers as well, both auto companies. So some action expected in this pack. Um, between Escorts and Aisha, uh, is there a preference that you have in terms of technicals that that look stronger? Uh, uh, chart of Aisha is looking uh, better than uh, the Escort because yesterday. Uh, Uh, Aisha Motor has formed a hammer pattern, uh, which is a bullish pattern on the daily chart, and uh, we are expecting a uh, pullback towards twenty-four fifty uh, over the short term. Once it uh, manages to move above twenty-four fifty, then further uh, move towards twenty-five hundred, twenty-five fifty is expected. Okay. Uh, well, we have to wait and watch how the results will play out. Definitely a big day for escorts. Definitely commodity prices uh, weak, uh, or rather modest rural demand have been some concern. So let's see whether or not they've been able to offset that with price hikes and other initiatives. As far as Aisha is concerned, uh, realizations are expected to rise 20 percent again. They've taken a price hike as well. Uh, good recovery is expected both in Royal Enfield and the CV business. So we'll have to wait and see how the numbers pan out. But uh, well, clearly Rupak seems to prefer Aisha over an Escorts at this juncture. And finally, another big name, uh, Rupak, will be Tech Mahindra in today's trading session. Uh, will the company maintain their margin guidance of FY23? That's the big question that investors are asking, that analysts on the street are asking. And will there be a management change? But uh, Overall, how does it look technically? I mean, the numbers could come probably in the second half of the session or post market. But could it be an action-packed day for for a stock like Tech uh, Tech Mahindra? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tech Mahindra has reached its uh, previous swing low, so uh, it is currently uh, on verge of forming a, a double bottom okay. around twelve hundred. And uh, there is a uh, positive divergence in the RSI. So overall. Tech Mahindra is a good buy with a very uh, favorable risk and uh, reward uh, uh, ratio, so one can uh, uh, create long position in Tech Mahindra hmm. around the current market price of twelve twelve with a stop loss of uh, below eleven ninety. Okay. And the target would be thirteen hundred and thirteen fifty. Okay. How are you? Um... 
uh, assessing Wipro's charts, uh, there's a query that has come by from Praveen Kumar. He wants to perhaps look at investing in a Wipro instead of TechM. So, uh, what would be your advice? Yeah, uh, Wipro is also looking good after a uh, strong correction from around 600 rupees to 460. So, it has formed a teaser bottom around uh, 460. So, one can uh, take a long position keeping a stop loss below 460 for a target of around uh, 500 and 515. Okay, let's address some more viewer queries and IEX seem to be, uh, you know, of lot of interest given the, the action that's happening in the power and energy space as well. The stock, however, looks weak. It's about 22% uh, off in the last one month, trading at 184 levels. Subramaniam V wants, to, uh, wants you to suggest Rupak whether he should buy IEX at the current level. 184 rupees is where it shut shop yesterday. What's your call? The IEX is likely to remain weak as long as it is trading below 190. So one can add the stock uh, either above 190 or on a correction. Okay. All right. I hope Subramaniam is taking note of that. How, how about AU Bank? Uh, Rajendra Kanoria is writing to us live and he wants to know if it's the right time to buy AU Bank. AU Bank has taken a support once at, a, uh, uh, at its 200 days moving average on the daily chart. So, uh, 1220 is going to act as a very crucial support on sustained basis. If it sustains above 1220, then uh, one can um, add AU Bank for the short term, yeah. keeping a stop loss below 1220 for a target of around 3, 320. Okay. All right. Lots of queries coming in, Rupak. I'd like you to stay on with us. Uh, before we uh, proceed further with our queries, I want to bring on board my colleague Aparna Ayer. She tracks the money market very closely. Aparna, there's been a free fall in the, in the Indian rupee. Lots of factors at play. There's geopolitics, there's inflation worries, etc. Talk to us about how it impacts the market and the Aadmi. Perhaps you can talk about the market impact first. Uh, so the most obvious impact is uh, companies. Uh, I mean, let's first talk about why the rupee is actually falling. Um, uh, the clear uh, reason for the rupees fall, and mind you, it's not the only currency that's been falling. All the EM currencies are down. Is the dollar strength? Uh, we can see that the dollar index is at a twenty-year high, and uh, that's the dire direct impact on uh, emerging market currencies. Uh, when the dollar index is at 20 year high, uh, uh, you are at the other end of the spectrum, which is you are a depreciating current currency. Uh, now, um, we have also seen that there is a steady uh, outflow of dollars from um, domestic equities. So, um, because of that, uh, the dollar outflow, the rupee is weakening. Um, so, from the perspective of flows alone, the rupee has had a very uh, challenging uh, period so far. Now what uh, this does to the economy and to you and, uh, our own wallets, uh, firstly from the market's perspective, um, uh, when a depreciating currency is, uh, is unfortunately it, it becomes like a self-fulfilling proxy uh, because if you are a foreign investor, you are, if you're moving out of India, you're actually losing money because mm. the dollar is stronger and the rupee is depreciating. So you need more rupees to buy dollars to repatriate. That is one. Uh, the other thing is that we are a net importing country. Um, a lot of industries across uh, the country, various sectors, uh, they import a lot of goods from overseas. So uh, the double impact of um, a sharp rise in commodity prices, which we have seen so far across the world, and the depreciating rupee, is going to increase input costs for companies more. Uh, so companies' earnings, profit margins will also be impacted. Of course, the IT industry and the exports are a different uh, uh, story. Uh, but largely, this is how it's going to play out. So, so earnings are also in threat. Okay. So, like you said, could you could one look at buying uh, or rather investing in sectors like an IT, like a pharma or companies which have massive exports exposure good time to you know enter those kind of stocks uh, uh that, that i can't say a categorical yes and i'll explain that 
uh, so uh, the argument for a weak rupee has always been the benefit of increased export realizations we should understand that uh, uh, a depreciating currency of course increases export earnings so export oriented sectors tend to do well uh, but the it industry and the other sectors they also have sector specific issues mm. so you need to look at that before taking a call um for example the it industry profit margins are uh, are looking to be under pressure now this is despite a depreciating rupee so uh, a depreciating currency can help you only so much uh, beyond that there are a lot of other factors and bigger factors uh, at play which investors need to look at all right uh, finally aparna what are you picking up from uh, i'm sure you've been talking to a lot of experts and a lot of people who track this uh, track the currency markets closely how, how are the predictions looking like which way is the rupee headed are are more rbi efforts and initiatives perhaps required to to protect it yeah so um, the rpi's intervention policy is very clear they always enter the market to smoothen the volatility uh, now remember that when we were speaking to experts a couple of weeks back when the rupee was somewhere closer to the 77 Uh, 76 and a half, 77, uh, and now it's a. It has hit a new fresh low within just two weeks. At that time, uh, uh, the rupee was. Uh, the forecast was that the rupee will hit 78 by the end of May. Now it could come sooner. The way we are seeing the momentum in the currency, it could come later. Uh, but there is consensus that it's a one-sided move, unfortunately, which is downwards for the rupee. Um, at this point uh, now when we uh, let's go back to the rbi's uh, strategy hmm. uh, they have always maintained that we will come to smooth the volatility we are not protecting any level in the in the market uh, so we have seen heightened uh, uh, activity from uh, i mean currency dealers tell us that there is activity from the central bank it's been intervening at various levels uh, at various episodes in the market but yeah the <coughs> sorry Okay. the uh, thing is that uh, it can only slow down the depreciation it cannot change the direction of the rupee so okay. we will see the depreciation the momentum slowing down hmm. but i don't think it's going to really uh, make much difference in completely uh, changing the direction of the rupee all right aparna here is hoping uh, you know for the same but thank you so much for joining in and giving us an understanding getting us an understanding on how the rupee has been falling why it has been falling and what is the likely way forward let's uh, bring back rupak once again uh, we have some more queries to address uh, rupak some of our viewers mm-hmm. want to know your view on bajaj finserve and uh, bajaj finance as well ashok has written written to us for bajaj finserve and we have nikhil asking us on bajaj finance can you tell us uh, any any of these counters that you like right now uh- both the both the counter are uh, looking a bit negative uh, okay. but after a uh, solid correction from 8000 and uh, from 7600 uh, recently it has fallen down to uh, 5500 uh, kind of levels so uh, after a huge correction and the stock is a bit oversold and we can expect a recovery in the stock towards 6000 over the short term then again uh, a sustained basis trading above 6000 will uh, Pulls the stock towards sixty-two uh, hundred. So uh, I think one should add uh, the stock, keeping a stop loss below yesterday's low, like fifty-five uh, hundred for Bajaj Finance, and for Bajaj Finsar. The stop loss should be uh, on sustained basis seven ninety-eight. One can add the stock. With a stop loss of seven nine twelve seven ninety eight for a target of thirteen uh, four hundred. Okay. So All right. So both the stock is uh, poised to give it a short term pullback. Okay. All right. One last query then. This is from Ashish Chaudhary. Wants to buy Indian oil at the current price. uh surprisingly in the last one week when there was you know so much of volatility taking place in the markets this stock actually didn't fall much down by about half a percent odd 122 is the is the price right now um, rupak what is your advice 
the stock has taken support once at uh, 200 days moving average and it is currently uh, uh, trading just above it so one can uh, one can expect a rally towards 126 128 over the short term as long as it is trading above 118 okay all right i hope uh, our viewers have taken note of all the targets and the levels that you've pointed out for them to watch uh, but what about your own uh, investing or trading ideas that you have for our viewers why don't you flag them off Okay. So, uh, I talked about a uh, banking index, uh, which uh, which corrected a lot and found support around uh, its uh, uh, 61.8 percent kind of levels of uh, retracement levels. So, uh, one banking stock I would like to uh, recommend, which is ICICI Bank. The stock has uh, corrected from uh, around 780 kind of levels and currently trading just below 700. And uh, it is currently trading just uh, above 61.8%. Uh, and uh, I'm expecting a rally towards uh, 730 over the short term. And on the lower end, uh, 685 should be a stop loss for a long position. Okay. All right. I think you also have a, a buy on a GE Shipyard and Ambuja Cement. Would you want to highlight that as well? Yeah. So GECP has found a support uh, uh, around uh, 50 EMA on the daily chart and uh, the stock is currently uh, expected to move towards higher level like uh, 395, 400 kind of levels can be seen over the short term as long as it is uh, sustaining above 357. Okay. And uh, Ambuja Cement has formed a uh, bullish engulfing pattern at the current uh, level on the daily chart and the stock is expected to move towards 400 and higher over the short term whereas a stop loss of uh, 363 can be placed okay and a, a sell on hdfc life as well right what are what are the levels yeah. you're watching there hdfc life has given a trend line breakdown on the daily chart and the stock is likely to uh, move down towards uh, 527 520 kind of levels over the short term and uh, on the higher end, uh, 556 is going to be a, a level which, uh, where, should, where a stop loss should be placed. A lot of conversations happening on our live feed right now on Titan. Uh, so before we let you go, Rupa, if you can give us your view on Titan as well. It, it has cooled off quite a bit, but is it attractive enough to buy at the current level? So Titan has witnessed a severe correction over the short term and uh, after a huge correction, the stock is highly oversold and uh, we can find uh, there is a, a support around uh, 2020. So if 2020 is held, uh, uh, I think the stock is likely to move towards 2150 over the short term. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the time we have on the show. Thank you so much for joining in and for helping out our viewers with their queries and their concerns. Look, looks like we're off to a good start this morning. We will be, uh, you know, seeing some action on the positive side going by what the SGX 50 is indicating. So let's see how the day pans out. We're going to wrap it up on this edition of Morning Trade with Money Control. Uh, stay tuned. We have Markets with Santo and CJ coming up next.